rest of them now, Francie. Is that all, Mom? Can we go now? Not so loud, Neely. Do you want to wake your papa up? Gosh, Francie, ain't you two of them old dishes here? She'll only be a minute. My, I wish you was as anxious to get going on school mornings as she is on Saturday. Papa was late last night. Yeah, I was dead asleep when he come in, I guess. He says if people didn't like to make speeches so much at dinners, waiters could spend more time with their families. Ah, oh, it wasn't much of a job, I guess. Them club dinners don't tip much. Yes, yes, go on, I'll dry them. Don't look like you got much there this week. One of these days, Mrs. Gaddis is gonna throw away that old wash boiler of hers. Connie will pay his funny for the copper bottom off of that. And he won't pay any more than he has to. You watch him on that way in now. Yes, I'm... Oh, parents ought to have a day that's like Saturday is for kids. Go on. Maybe if I start in the lower hall and scrub my way up today, it'll make something special out of it for me. Keep an eye on him, Francie. Come on! Yes, Mama? Get to stand there after he pays you. You forgot that last time, and a penny's a penny, ain't it? Well, I guess I know it is. Well, all right then. Recent. Shut up! I say, what things are worth around here? Who's next? Oh, hello, little girl. Come on. Shut up! Shut up! Done fine. Nine cents. Three, five, nine. There you are. An extra penny because you're a nice little girl. That's better. Gosh, you wish Connie liked the pink boys. It's nine in my pension penny. Thirty-nine. It's a pencil. Oh, yeah. A pen wiper. little girl? I'm merely looking, thank you. I have a right. I have money. Step on a crack. Break your mother's back. Here she comes! Oh, Jesus! Hey! stairs go to later. Four cents, Mom. Well, that's pretty good. Dump the bucket, Neely. Mama, can I? No, dump the bucket and bring it. Thanks. The day for the insurance collector, and I certainly don't want him to catch me looking like this. God, ain't it? Yeah, but Christmas will be here before you know it. I got enough troubles without worrying about that. How's your sister today, honey? Fully, thank you. Well, hello, 
Flossie, dear? Oh, Mrs. Norman, don't you notice something? Well, you look like you was feeling better, much better, don't you, Francie? No, I don't, I don't. <laughs> Eat up the coffee while I fix up. Right there. That's better. something. That doesn't mean you couldn't do something else once in a while. Neely, you cannot have any of those pennies to buy an ice cream cone. They go in the bank the same as usual. Bring them in here, Neely. Half of everything we get goes into that bank. That's the way it is, and that's the way it's going to be now. Put them in there. Gosh, I bet we got about a hundred dollars in that old bank by now. Nine's more like it. Mama, Mama, they're cutting the trees. Oh, that's too bad. It was kind of pretty there with the birds sitting in it sometimes. Papa loved that tree. Oh, quit mooning over it. Got in the way of the washing. The tree ain't gonna put no pennies in the bank. It's Mr. Barker. Get out the good cup and saucer and give it a wipe. And Francie, you can stay in the room if you want to while Mr. Barker's here. How do you do, Mr. Barker? How do you do, Francie? Mommy is temporarily detained, but we'll join you directly. Hello, Neely. Hello. Why, Francie, you get manners right out of a book. And company or no company, Mrs. Nolan always looks the lady. You should see some of my people, even ladies with husbands that work steady. Won't you go into the parlor and have a cup of coffee? That I will, and your hospitality is very kind, Mrs. Nolan. Well, old man Gentry's off to jail again. Oh, that's too bad. But she's keeping up his insurance just the same. And here's ours. Ten cents for me, ten cents for Mr. Nolan, a nickel for each of the children. And you'll never regret it, Mrs. Nolan. A fine funeral for every member of the family, heaven forbid. And now your weekly receipts, Mrs. Nolan. Now, there's one party, not far from here, I wouldn't like to say who, that didn't get no receipts this week. And name and no names, I will say that it's a family that the angel of death has marked on his invitation list, heaven forbid. And he says his sister's got one foot in the grave. Neely. It'll mean Potter's Field, most likely. Uh, thank you, Francie. Well, that's what people get. Wasting good money to give her dresses instead of insurance. Dresses that'll last longer than she will. All depends on what folks thinks is important. But Papa says... That's right, Mr. Barker. It all depends on what folks thinks is important. Oh, and how is Mr. Nolan? Is he working or not working? Some tell me one thing, some another. Of course, I don't listen. Mr. Nolan being a singing waiter, Mr. Barker, and what you might call an artist, his work don't come steady like other people's. But I'm sure you'll remember when you talk to folks that the Nolans have always paid their insurance on the dot. Oh, you surely don't think I go around spreading gossip about my clients, Mrs. Nolan. Oh, sure not. And how's my mother, Mr. Barker? In the prime, Mrs. Nolan, fine as can be. And she says to tell you she'll be over... Oh, over tonight, uh, same as usual. And uh, I trust you're pleased with the news about your sister? Well, uh, just which news do you mean, Mr. Barker? Oh, well, now, she must be saving it to surprise you with tonight when the family's all here together. I'd take it kindly if you told me what you mean. Well, I trot around, same as usual, to collect her weekly dime, and what do you think happens? Well, sir, she gives me two dimes. Yes, sir, she's done it again. She's got herself a brand new husband. Oh, no. Well, now, I suppose you mean about her still being married. I don't mind saying I had the same thought myself. But I'm sure it must be all right. She must have made some arrangement. I'm quite sure she did, Mr. Barker. I'm sure she that she called this one bill, too. You children run along now and do the marketing. Go on, take some money from oh, the cup. Take the money from the cup and get a five-cent soup bone off for Hassler's. Don't get the chopped meat from him, though. He grinds it behind closed doors and heaven only knows. <laughs> Go to Werner's for the meat. Ask for round steak, chopped, ten cents worth, and don't let him give it to you off the plate. Take an onion, Neely and ask him to chop it in. And then, just at the last, ask for a piece of suet to fry it with. But he won't always do that, Mama. Tell him your Mama said, and then go for the bread. Excited, him, Mama. All Sorry. right, ask for a nice pie, not too crushed. Now, go on. But, Mama, we know Aunt Sissy's been married before. That's well, I can remember, too, Uncle Bill. That's nothing for you to talk about. Now, run along now and get things done. You got no right, Mr. Barker, to be carrying tales about my sisters, though there was something wrong. She, 
may be funny some ways, but she wouldn't do nothing wrong. So I'd like it if you didn't talk to people like it was. Strike me dead if I'd ever think of mentioning it to anyone but you, Mrs. Nolan. Yeah, sure, I know. Well, you might as well go on now and tell me what you do know. No point in my being the only one who don't hear it. Well, ten cents worth of round steak. You want it ground? No, thank you. You're sure, no? Wasn't 20 minutes ago I ground that whole plate full fresh? No, thank you. My mama wants it ground. You don't tell me. And she said to chop that in with it. Oh, she did. And a piece of sword to fire it with, mama said. Sweet jumpin' Christopher. Mama thinks we don't know anything. Yeah, she acts like we were kids or something. I bet she has a fight with Aunt Sissy tonight. It's got something to do with men like Aunt Sissy too much. Well, Papa says we ought to make everybody like us. I guess maybe ladies shouldn't. Maybe Aunt Sissy wouldn't have changed husband so much if any of her babies would have lived. She's crazy about babies. Look who's talking about babies. A lot you know. I know as much as you do. You don't know nothing. You think you're so smart. Boys make me sick. Well, what do you think girls make? Here she comes. Come on, you can't have. We've been waiting for a while. Come on. 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 Burton's Anatomy of Melancholy. Are you sure you want this? Yes, ma'am. Don't you think it's a trifle over your head? Yes, ma'am. Well, then why did you select it? Well, I read all the authors beginning with A and all the B's down to Burton. It's next. You mean you're trying to read your way straight through the library? Yes, ma'am. But a book like this, you'll only be confused. Please, I want to read clear through the alphabet. I want to know everything in the world. Well. All right, on. do something for me, will you? Take another book, too, here. When Knighthood Was in Flower, Just for Fun. It's Saturday. I'll have a headache thinking about you wrestling with the anatomy of melancholy all weekend. Will you? Yes, ma'am. Don't shut up! I thought it was nice and quiet, though. I've heard everything. 
knuckles and muscles, alive, alive, oh. I won, I won. Well, now, I wouldn't be too sure about that if I was you. But I did. I got it open before you finished, and that's the rule. But I came up one flight two steps at a time before I remember. Don't that make a difference? No, sir. The rule And in a manner of speaking, you never did stop me at all because my heart kept right on singing. Papa, you're <laughs> joking. Well, I guess I'll let you get away with winning this time, Prima Donna. And where's your beautiful mama? Finishing the hall. She must be on the top floor. She'd have heard you. Well, in that case, why aren't you getting busy? Why aren't you laying out my clothes? Oh, Papa, you always make fun. You know you haven't any more clothes. Haven't any more clothes, huh? What's this? A tie. And this? A dickie. And this? An apron. Well, them's clothes, ain't they? And you better be getting that apron iron, too. Oh, Papa, you got a job for tonight? You see the palm of that hand? That's right where I got the world tonight. Where's the job, Papa? Plumbers, a big wedding party. Oh. And you know something, Prima Donna? There'll be plenty of tips. Singing or waiting? Both. Oh, maybe tonight will be it. Maybe tonight he'll be there, the impresario. And I'll hear you sing and he'll put you on the stage. And why not? Ain't I the Brooklyn thrush? Oh, Papa! <laughs> and now you'd better be getting my apron iron. Have it in a jiffy, Papa. The coffee's on. That's my prima donna. Early one morning I heard a maiden singing. Uh... Oh, Papa, I can't sing. Come on now, you're holding up the singing. Oh, don't deceive me. Oh, never leave me. And better singing I never did hear. I'd love to iron for you, Papa. You know something? A day like this is just like somebody gave you a present. Everything just right. <laughs> I wonder what people did before they invented coffee. Oh, this sure could be a fine world if... Hey, you know something, Prima Donna? You're gonna make somebody a mighty fine wife someday. Oh, Papa. And very pretty, too. That is, uh, if your nose doesn't grow crooked. Could it really? Honest? <laughs> oh, no, it's the prettiest nose in all Brooklyn. Oh, Papa, it isn't. Who says it isn't? You just tell me who said it, and I'll take care of him. Papa, you're crazy. And you know something else? You're not going to be ironing like this when that impresario comes along. Things are going to be different around here. You wait and see. Yes, Papa. Hey, what's the wish you wish the most when I ship comes sailing in? Well, it already came true. What is it? Come on and tell me. Well, I wish that when you came home today, you wouldn't be sick. Oh. Who told you to call it sick, baby? Ah, you shouldn't waste your wishes on things like that. You should be saving them for a, a, a silk dress or something. Haven't you got a better wish than that? Well... Come on. Well, I hope Mama won't be too mad with Aunt Sissy. What about Aunt Sissy? She's gone and got herself another husband. Again. No. Oh. Oh, oh, no. Gee, if there isn't a woman for you. Hey, what did, what did your mama say? Well, she didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that. Couldn't you sort of say something to her? Not to be too mad to Aunt Sissy. That I could, Prima Donna, and that I will. Oh, thank you, Papa. Now, haven't you got just one little wish for yourself? Just one wish. Just for you. Well, did you see it, Papa? What? Out the window. Our tree, they've killed it. Well, will you look at that now? They didn't have any right to kill it, did they, Papa? Oh, now, wait a minute. They didn't kill it. Why, they couldn't kill that tree. Honest? Why, sure, baby. Don't tell me that tree's gonna lay down and die that easy. Look at that tree. See where it's coming from? Right up out of the cement. Didn't nobody plant it. It didn't ask the cement could it grow. It just couldn't help growing so much it pushed that old cement right out of the way. Well, when you're busting with something like that, can't anybody help it? Like, like that little old bird up there. Listen to him. <laughs> he didn't ask anybody could he sing, and he certainly didn't take any lessons. He's so full of singing, it's just got to bust out someplace. Why, they could cut that old tree right down to the ground, and a root would push up someplace else in the cement. You wait till spring, Prima Donna, and you'll see. <laughs> well, this ain't winning the family bread, huh? Come on. Ain't you got one nice little wish just for yourself? No, Papa. I... I just... Just what? I just love you so much, Papa. Well, what do you know? Listen, if 
I make a lot of tips tonight, you know what I'm going to do? What, Papa? I'm going to put two bucks on the nose of a horse I know is running Monday. Then I'll win ten. Then I'll put it on another horse. If I use my head and I'm lucky, I'll run it up to 500 bucks. Then you know what I'm going to do? What, Papa? I'm going to take you on a trip. Just you and me. On a regular train. Maybe we'll go down south and see the cotton. You know, down where them cotton blossoms blow. Way down upon the Swanee River, far, far away. You're a nice girl, baby. Come on, we'll go up and tell your mama the news about my job. Anybody seen Johnny Nolan's wife? Johnny, you all right? And why not? Ain't I married to the most beautiful lady in all Williamsburg? Brooklyn? Well, you're shouting it so they'll hear you over to Manhattan. Now, don't you get fresh with me tonight, Mrs. Nolan. Happens I'm working. Clama's big wedding party. Well, I thought you looked kind of extra dressy. Mm -hmm. I guess you won't get home until the sun comes up. The later, the better. The more tips, the more fine silk stockings for my wife's pretty legs. Oh, silk stockings is just what I need. Now, just a minute, Mrs. Nolan. Ain't you gonna give me a kiss for luck? Well, the whole house is looking. Sure, I know they're looking, but who cares? This is the finest job I had in months. Maybe I'll get more from tonight. Well, you better get on with it. Good jobs don't wait. But the job's no good without you kiss me. Well, you still got away with you, Johnny Nolan. Now, go on, get out of here. Before you know it, the folks at that wedding will be an old married couple. Before you know it, I won't go at all. This ain't the only marriage that counts. Take your hat and get out of here before someone else cops that job. Uh, um, <clears throat> Francie was telling me that uh, Sissy's gone and done it again. Well, maybe he's a nice fella. Don't be too hard on her, huh? They was all nice fellas. Beat it now, Johnny. <clears throat> well, that's just a sample, madam. If you like my stock, drop me a card and I'll be back again. <clears throat> Good evening. Well, will you look at our beautiful princess tonight in a brand new gown? It's made out of silk. Silk? Oh, don't you tell me that. This dress is made out of flower petals and bird's wings and a little old piece of cloud. <laughs> Anybody can tell that. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Spencer. Working tonight, Johnny? Yeah, big wedding party. Oh. Good evening, Miss Lizzie, Miss Maggie. You're looking fine today, Miss Lizzie. You are. Thank you, ladies. Here comes the bride. Here. Good evening, young ladies. Good evening. Allow well, me, Princess. Hi, Mr. Ching. Hello. What did Mama say about Aunt Sissy? Now, don't worry about it. Everything's going to be all right. Your Aunt Sissy's a fine woman, Francie. Look at them things. There's no use talking. Someday I'm going to buy you them skates. Mom says not to be too late, Papa. Look, God invented time, and when he invents something, there's always plenty of it. There's your car, Papa. Boy, look at them knives. Mama says time is money. Oh, I guess he wasn't worrying much about money right then. There's your car, Papa. Well, I might as well catch you. <laughs> When weren't you hungry? Mama. Yes, Francie. What does white mean? Oh, just white, I guess. What do you mean, what does it mean? Well, Neely, why... sit down at your place. Well, why do girls always wear it when they're married, and when they're confirmed, and when they graduate? Why does it always have to be white? Just one of those things somebody started. Lots of things like that. Will I have a white dress when I graduate? We'll see. Neely will probably have to have shoes by that time. But, Mama. Well, talk to him about it. If you can get him to quit coming through the soles of his shoes. Just because he's a boy. All right, Mama, I will gladly do without so my little brother can be happy with new shoes. Little brother, my eyes. That'll I'll... do. Francie, you read too much. Well, hey, everybody. Hi, hey, Kissy. Hey, why did you bring it? I brought myself chicken bitties. Ain't that enough? Oh, and a couple of magazines from the dentist. What does he need them for? Or me either. I can't read like my educated little niece here. Hello, Katie, my darling. Good evening, Sissy.
well looked. You look fine, Katie. You know, I look fine. Who spilled the beans? Oh, I forgot it was old Barker's day here. Where's Johnny? I was kind of counting on him to be in my corner. Oh, sure, you and Johnny. Oh, look, Katie, I didn't tell you because I wanted to bring Bill around. But I couldn't. He's home sleeping. He's a milkman, see? Ah, listen. You're going to wish me happiness, ain't you? Naturally, I'm going to wish you happiness. This time, too. Oh, golly, why can't you skip to the part where you forgive me? You're going to before you're through. You know I'll get around you in the end. Why can't you just be human now and get it over with? Huh? Oh, there ain't no one like you to get around a person in the whole world, unless it's Johnny. You're in time for pie. Go on now and sit down. Oh, that's more like it. That's my kid sister talking. Just coffee for me. I've got to get home soon and fix breakfast for Bill. Breakfast? At night? Yeah, ain't it a riot? We sleep all day long with the shades pulled down to keep out the sun, and the window shut to keep out the noise. It's fun. You don't live like nobody else. No, you sure don't. Easy on the whip, kid. Oh, wait you meet my Bill. You and him Would you marry nobody that they wasn't named Bill, ain't sis? She might not remember them if they wasn't. Oh, Bill's got some other name. Steve, I think it is. But I always like Bill. A good man's name with no stuck up about it. Oh, you'll be crazy about him, Katie. Yeah, but the question is, how'll him and you get along? Oh, it's wrong, sissy. I, I mean, the others... The others was wrong. What's right about keeping on with a guy you don't love each other anymore? But it ain't as easy as that. I think Aunt Sissy's right about when love is dead. Now look what you started. It ain't nothing to talk about in front of them. Every time you come here, you fill their heads with... Go on downstairs for a while, kids. Your mama's got a spanking up her sleeve and she ain't got to feel right when somebody gets it. Might as well get it over with. Oh, you don't want to frown like that, snuggle pup. The fellas don't go for that at all. All right, kid, let's have it. The works. I'm a disgrace. You don't know what you're going to do with me. You can hardly face the neighbors with what they must be saying. I'm old enough to know better. Go on, get it all off your chest, and then we can make up and forget about it. That's right. Talk your way out of it. You probably will, too. What'd Mama have to say? Oh, you know Mama. She don't say much. Oh, but... sure, I know Mama. Sissy is bad only where the men are concerned, but she's good in her heart. Oh, but that ain't it, Sissy. People got a right to talk, and the kids are bound to hear, and it ain't right for them. And you can get in trouble. You ain't real sure what happened, and there's laws about things Katie, like so that. Katie, help me. This time it's for keeps. I ain't even gonna look at another guy. And as for the last one, he can't be alive, or I would have heard from him. I've been pretty good. Seven years is a long time to wait around not being married. They said all you had to wait was seven years. And I waited. Well, for the life of me, I don't know what you're trying to talk yourself into, but I got a feeling that ain't right. All I know is it can't be wrong or wouldn't feel like I do about it. I'm dumb, sure, but, but I know this much. If I feel bad about something, it's wrong. And if I feel good, it's right. Oh, you wouldn't get it, Katie. You got all the breaks I never had. You got the kids, and you got a guy you're clear overboard about. You're lucky. Yeah, and where does crazy over somebody get you? It don't put no pennies in the bank. It don't buy no clothes for the kids to go to school in. Maybe you got it better not sticking to one guy. I wish sometimes I wasn't so crazy over him. Hey, Katie. I won't have the kids taken after him either. Him and those dreamy ways of his I used to think was so fine. Not if I got to cut it right out of their hearts. Hey, Katie, what are you saying? I don't know. Yes, you do. You're saying plenty. What's happened between you and Johnny? I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what's come over me. Well, look, hon, it's time we found out. Sure, we got something to talk about now. I don't want to... Uh -uh. You're the kid sister. You listen now. You was awful crazy about Johnny. Don't tell me I seen you. It was like every woman wants to be with a guy. Yeah? All right. Maybe Johnny didn't turn out just like you figured. Sure, he drinks and all, and... And you're the one who's had to make most of the living, but, but everybody's got something. And you wasn't crazy about Johnny because he was going to be a banker. It was on account of, well, on account of how he laughed and, and how you felt walking down the street holding on to him and, and having other women look at you. And the way he could, the way he could talk about things and, and the way he had to say hello to everybody like, like he was giving away something. That's what you was crazy about, and that ain't changed. I don't know. Them things couldn't change in Johnny. 
Not even if he tries. He's just different, kind of. He always was. But he ain't changed. If there's been any change in him, maybe it's you. You still got all you was crazy over, ain't you? Yeah. Then thank your lucky stars for what you got, Katie Nolan, and take the rest along with it. And you got a lot, you can take it from me. And don't think you haven't. Well, I might have known, starting out to take you apart, I'd wind up with you making me over. Nice going. Don't stir yourself, pal. Thank you. Better go inside, Alfred. How'd you come out, Aunt Sis? No decision, it was a draw. Your mom's bark is worse than her bite. Look, tell me something. When Papa's home, I, I bet, I bet him and Mama laugh a plenty, don't they? You know, like, like they always did. Sure, Pop can make anybody laugh when he wants to. Except when he's drunk. Sick nearly, Mama said to call it. Okay, sick then. Look, hon, tell you what you can do for me. Do all the laughing you can. You know, keeps everybody healthy. Okay. Laughter is the singing of the angels. You're a funny kid. Head full of all them things. Kind of like your pop. She tells lies like pop, too. He does not tell lies. Well, I don't know what you're calling. Time out. I've had enough battling to last me for today. Where'd you get the skates? Oh, they aren't ours. Papa said to get us some, though. Oh, he didn't mean it. He just said that. He did, too, mean it, Neely Nolan, and... Easy now. Kind of like your pop, don't you, hon? He does mean it, doesn't he, Aunt Sissy? Sure he means it. He means it every word. But, well, you know, sometimes things happen. But it kind of ain't his fault. He... I tell you what. Let's make out like Johnny gave you them skates, like he said. And they're yours. Ain't gonna hurt nobody. Oh, Aunt Sissy... No sense them things standing around, nobody using them. Come on. Here we go. <laughs> Easy now. Is that fun? Huh? Can I put him on next day, Sissy? Sure you can. Mom, Mom, Hey, you come back your oh, child. Yeah, yeah, you bring that back. Hurt her. You bring back my right daughter's skates. You was the one that put them kids up to it. Easy now, nobody's hurt. We only borrowed them. She's not going off with them, Effie. Don't you dare take up for that woman like that, you. You poor little guy. Do you have to put up with that all the time? Hey, 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 hey officer, oh, come on over here. Now, this woman here, she tried to... Oh, I'm sure glad you come along, handsome. You look like you could whip a bunch of women into line. Well, that's fine, but now suppose somebody tells me what all the excitement's about. Look, she tried to steal my little girl's skate. She tried to stab her. We only bought them for just a minute, honest. That's right, there wasn't nobody using them. And a little fun and frolic on a Saturday never hurt nobody. Bet you know all about that, don't you? If you think you're gonna get out of it, making eyes at the law. It used to be a quiet thing. I don't know what the world's coming to. Get back a little bit, buddy, huh? This lady is my sister. She didn't mean any harm. I'm quite sure she didn't. Well, as far as I can see, there's been no harm done. Now, just break it up. Run along. Go to your homes. Go on, you too. Go on, buddy. Run along. Uh, now, suppose I see you women to your home. Thanks, handsome. My sister's always trying to be funny, officer. She don't mean nothing by it. I'd like you to know this is the first time that any of my family ever got into any trouble on the street. And I'll see to it that it don't happen again. I guess I know a lady when I see one, ma'am. I'm glad I've been of service to you, ma'am. He sure took a shine to you, Katie. <sighs> Go on, who'd look at me? He would. Funny, sometimes you kind of forget you are a woman. He wasn't going to arrest his mama. Aunt Sissy talked him out of it. We got to skate on him anyway, didn't we, Aunt Sissy? <laughs> you go inside and tell Sheila and her mama you're sorry. Do I have to, mama? I don't like to say to you what I'm going to, Sissy. Oh, golly, are we going to start that again? You're the only sister I got. I don't care what people say about you for myself. But I got the kids to worry about, and if I don't worry about them, nobody else will. You're... Well, you're bad for them, sissy. What are you trying to say, kid? I don't want you to come around here no more. My mind's made up, so don't try to change it with any of that soft talk of yours. Why, well, I won't, Katie. Not if you mean it. 
But let's keep on talking about you. Soft's one thing, but hard's another. All right, it ain't nice to be hard. But my kids is gonna be somebody if I gotta turn into granite rock to make them. Oh, I wish I hadn't said that, kid. Bye, Katie. And Nahor lived nine and twenty years and begat Terah. And Nahor lived after he begat Terah a hundred and nineteen years. Boy, that's old and grandma, ain't it? And begat sons and daughters. Okay, that's the end of the page. Troilus, and dreaming night will hide our joys no longer. I would not from thee. Cressida, night hath been too brief. Troilus, beshrew the witch with venomous Oh, that ain't even English. It is too. Shakespeare wrote the best English of anybody. All right, then you tell me what it means, you're so smart. I didn't say I know what it means. I said I liked it. That'll do. Okay, but I bet you don't know what it means either. Maybe not, but I do know it's good for you. Beshrew the witch with venomous she don't white. Know what she it stays. Means. Mom don't know what it means. Grandma can't even read. And gosh knows I don't know what it means. Mama, is. I can't read. If he's just going wasting to... time every night reading stuff, nobody knows what it's all about. Now listen, your aunt Sissy brought that Bible all the way from Sheepshead Bay, and your papa blew in all his tips one time on that Shakespeare. Because Grandma said they was the greatest book and you should read from them every night. So you ain't gonna waste them. I don't know. Sometimes it does seem kind of foolish. I might get you somewhere. Might even get you a job someday. Who can tell? This reading will not stop. I say this thing. To this new land, your grandfather and I came very long ago now. Because we heard that here is something very good. Hard we work. Very hard, but we could not find this thing. For a long time, I do not understand. And then I know. When I am old, I know. In that old country, a child can rise no higher than his father's state. But here, in this place, each one is free to go as far as he's good to make up himself. This way, the child can be better than the parent. And this is the true way things grow better. And this has to do something with the learning, which is here free to all people. I, who am old, miss this thing. My children miss this thing. But my children's children shall not miss it. This reading will not stop. And you, Katie, it is not only for the job that this is good, but for the true things inside of us. You don't think well about this, nor about what you do with your sister. You have forgotten to think with your heart. There is a coldness growing in you, Katie. Through the witch with venomous white she stays, as tediously as hell, but flies the grasps of love. In Dublin's fair city, where girls are so pretty, I first set my eyes on sweet Molly Malone. As she wheels a wheelbarrow, the streets broad and narrow, crying cockles and muscles, alive, alive, oh, alive. It's all right, Mama. I don't think he's sick. Papa. Well, what do you know if it ain't my beauty? Hey, what are you doing up this time of night? Well, I just made up my mind to wait up for you. I guess I ain't used to the hours anymore. No, leave it. It's nice. Go on. Fancy coffee. Is it something to eat, Papa? And what else with me coming from a grand banquet? I got some French rolls, a whole half of broiled lobster from the shores of Maryland, fried oysters, 
caviar from far off sunny Russia, and cheese from the mountain fastnesses of La Belle France. What do you know about the mountain fastnesses of France? Is it better coming from there, Papa? Oh, well, it's supposed to be mighty good. But coming home like this, I know that's good. Well, let's eat it. No reason we shouldn't have a party of our own. <sighs> I'm hungry. Is that all you got to say to your papa? Hello, Pop. His stomach's like the Irish Sea, no bottom to it. Mommy, your wedding cold. Well, ain't this a kind of wedding party? Oh. You bet it is. I wish I could have swiped some champagne. Oh, no, I don't. Coffee's better. But um, look who's telling me I don't know about them mountain fastnesses of France. Oh, that. Yeah, that. Imagine you forgetting. Well, I didn't forget, not exactly. And it was a long time ago. What do you think of a mama that forgets where she went on her honeymoon? Did you really go there, mama? Of course not. Your papa's joking. Sure we did, or just the same as. We spent our honeymoon in a school. It was as big as a palace. We it... just worked there nights, the two of us, cleaning. It was right here in Brooklyn before you was born. That ain't what you told me then. You mean to say when we was having our supper there alone, and I used to pull down them maps, and take the teacher's pointer, and pick out the places we pretend we was that night, you mean to say we really wasn't there? You mean you forgot that sunny France was where we liked the best? And all the laughing we used to do there? You're gonna sit right down and tell me we really wasn't there? Well, I guess we was kind of at that. And you're gonna tell me I don't know about them mountain fastnesses of France. Katie Nolan, I'm ashamed of you. Wasn't there nobody in the schoolroom but you, Papa? No, sir. We had the whole place Your to ourselves. Your Papa ourself. better we... quit talking, or he'll have you believe in you was in France, too. No, Papa, talk some more. What's this here stuff? Caviar that comes all the way from Russia. Them's fish eggs. Fish uh, eggs? Yeah. I never could get it why they like it myself, <clears throat> except that it's hard to get and costs a lot. And that <laughs> makes it good, Papa? What about the Russians? It ain't hard for them to get. Do they like it? Well, can you tie that? Now, ain't we got the smartest kids? <laughs> Papa, talk some more. Tell us all about the party and don't leave out anything. Oh, that can wait. Here. How's that? Three dollars, them's good wages. And good tips, too. Papa, start. Was there music and did they dance? Oh, your mother's got no time for all that. You could tell me. You used to. Well, it was kind of nice. Uh, Kilometers, uh, their best room. And all fixed up with white flowers. There was flowers on a table, flowers on the chandelier, and even on the floor. And here was a great big horseshoe table with lots of people all around. And right in front, a great big wedding cake. It must have been three feet tall. Why didn't you bring home some of that? Was the bride pretty? Well, she was maybe not so young, but... Uh, Oh, sure. She was beautiful in a blue dress and all, and she had uh, diamonds on her fingers and in her ears, and she glittered, sort of. And, and when she walked, her, her dress swished, kind of. And the champagne just flowed like water. And the smell of it got all mixed up with the flowers and the powder the ladies wore. And it made a wonderful new perfume that, oh, made you feel good just to smell it. Did you sing for him, Papa? Oh, I, I was coming to that. I got three iron cores for my wild Irish rose. And everybody clapped and clapped. And then I sang Irish eyes are smiling four times. Oh, it must have been awful nice. It was all right. And when it come time for them to cut the cake, the band played Kiss Me Again, she put her arms around him and boy, did he look scared. <laughs> <laughs> what was he scared of, Papa? Huh? You kids ask too many questions. You heard the story now. Go on and go to bed. It must be three o'clock. I got a bellyache. Well, lay on the right side. Good night, Mom. Good night, Neely. Good night, Francie. Francie's kind of mad at me because, well, Sissy made a scene on the street today and I asked her to stay up. Way. Papa, was there an impresario there? No, not tonight, prima donna. But you got no call to be mad at your mama. She's always got a good reason for what she does. Good night, Francie. <sighs> Did 
Johnny, tell me what else happened at the party. Well, it was nice, just like I told you. Awful nice. Johnny, do you think... I mean, have I changed a lot? Changed? Why, she couldn't hold a candle to you. She ain't so hot. I just said that for the kids. No, no sir. No, that's not what I mean. What I mean is, am I getting hard, you know? Oh, now where did you grab onto an idea like that? Hard? I don't know. I, I, I don't want to be, but, well, there's the kids and all, and I, I want to do what's right for them, and maybe sometimes I Now, will you I stop am... talking like that? Why, you're prettier than you ever was. I almost told that to that whole bunch down at the party tonight. I almost said, you ought to see my bride that's waiting home for me tonight. And you was waiting, Katie. That was nice. Awful nice. It was just like it used to be. You told about the party awful nice tonight, Johnny. I should have waited up more often, I guess. Oh, it ain't your fault, working hard like you do. You know something? I wish I could have got you the rest of that set when, when we was married. The guy said it came all the way from Spain. What else was in that set, Johnny? You ain't told me for a long time. Two little side combs and a locket on a chain. And a bracelet, you said? Oh, there's no use talking. Someday I'm gonna look that guy up and get you the rest of that set. Oh, well, that's nice, Johnny, but I don't... No, there's no buts about it. I mean it. Things are gonna be different around here. You ain't gonna be working hard like you, like you are now. I don't mind the work, Johnny. No, sir, I ain't gonna stand for it. Look at them pretty hands. They ain't got no business being in the water all the time. I'm going to change a lot of things around here. I'm going to cut out the drinking, too. And just to prove it to you, here's my tip money. Don't keep a... your tips, Johnny. Take all a man's money. It ain't right. And I'm going to keep Adam down at the union headquarters and make him get me some jobs. Yes, sir, tonight's the beginning of something new. Oh, you believe me, don't you, Katie? Yeah, Johnny, yeah, sure I do. And I'll be singing all over Brooklyn and maybe Manhattan, too. Have you heard Johnny Nolan sing, they'll say? And, and oh, then maybe someday... Johnny, maybe... stop it! Stop it! Stop! Talking. You ain't got a chance. Who are we trying to kid? Yeah. Sure, you're right. Who am I trying to kid? I didn't go to hurt you, Johnny, but it's the truth, and I can't change it. Yeah. And I can tell you something else. All that baloney about them encores tonight. It was just because they was a little drunk and feeling good. I wasn't so much. That's right. I'll never be able to change it. Sure, you're right. Who am I trying to kid? school, haven't you? I'll look after him for you. Now, don't you worry. He ain't in any trouble. I'll take good care of him. Here. Is this the house? No. The next one. Second floor back. And if you talk to him, he's always all right. And... Sure, sure, I know. Now, don't you fret. You just run along, huh? All right, lad, come on. They'll make it. <laughs>
expect to find you here, Mom. It, is there anything I can do? He's my husband. I can take care of him. It's all right, Johnny. I'll get you a nice cup of coffee. A nice cup of coffee. A nice cup of coffee. Oh, I just wanted to say, ma'am, that the, the gentleman wasn't making no trouble. He just needed a little help. Here, drink it, Johnny. Uh, isn't there anything that I can do? If you wasn't new on the beat, Mr. McShane, you'd know that Johnny never makes any trouble. And you'd know that the whole Nolan family don't need anybody's help. I thank you, Mr. McShane, if you'd mind your own business. Oh, sure, Mrs. Nolan. Beauty is truth, truth, beauty. That is all ye know on earth and all ye need to know. Now, class. Beauty is truth. Who knows the name of the meter? Francis Nolan? Yes, but... You can't. No, but. I only meant to say... I was thinking about the words, what they mean. And I wondered... You don't have to know the words, Francis. Just the meter. But if beauty is truth and that's all you need... I mean, all you need to know, then that means it's the most important thing. And if a man... I mean, if somebody spent all his time trying to be like that. Well, it's hard to put, but no matter what else he did, then... Then what, Francis? Then it would be all right. Wouldn't it? I'm afraid I don't understand a, a thing you're saying, Francis. And we're late now with our arithmetic. Class will get their arithmetic. Pop, why don't the cats and gamma kids talk plain English? Supposed to make it funny. Yes. Francie, you've been staring out that window over half an hour. Can't you make up your mind to do something? What shall I do? Mm, you used to like to do your homework Sundays. I don't know. I don't like school as much as I used to. Now you're getting some sense. School's the same this year as it was last. Mama. Mm -hmm. You know that big market on Clancy Street down the hill? Mm, we can't trade there if that's what you mean. That neighborhood's expensive. Well, I meant... I mean... Well, the other day I passed that way on my way home and... Well, Mom, you know what's just a couple of blocks away from that market? Another market, I guess. And am I supposed to guess what's two blocks away from there? Francie, why don't you say what you mean? I didn't mean anything, I guess. <laughs> Neely, sometimes I think you make these holes on purpose. Papa? Yes, baby? You know what I read in the magazine once? What was it, Francie? Well, it said that walking was a good thing. It said people would look and feel a lot better if they did more of it. Walk and put rose petals in your cheeks, it said. Then I ought to be a raven beauty with all them stairs. That isn't what it meant. It meant, well, like on a Sunday. People would feel a lot better if they got out and took a walk or something, instead of just sitting around. Fancy, I want you to stop talking around about things like that. It ain't right. If you got something to say, just say it right out, plain. I wasn't going to say anything. I was just talking about walking. Well, there's been so much talking about walking, I think I'll take one. You want to go along, Prima Donna? Oh, yes, Papa. Sure, Papa. Must be pretty special, this place you walk to that's two blocks away from the market. This way, Papa. Is this it? Yes, Papa. The school? I don't understand. It must be just as nice inside, don't you think? The teachers and all, and... Well, what are you driving at, baby? Bend down, Papa. I wish I could go to that school, Papa. Oh. Well, I, I don't know, baby. It'd be awful nice, but they got rules. You gotta go to the school where you live. Oh, I know. I didn't really. Well, now, uh, wait a minute. Maybe there's a way. It's a free country, ain't it? School days, school days. Hey, 
Maybe we could move near here. When? Well, now, whoa, uh, whoa. Uh, sometime soon. As soon as our ship comes in, Prima Donna, you'll see. Oh. Only by that time, I'll... Oh, you want to go there awful bad, don't you, baby? Then we're going to find a way. Honest? Well, now, I, I got to turn this over a little. Let's do some more walking. Maybe it's good for thinking, too. School day, school day. Hey, that ain't a bad little house. How'd you like to live there? It's got a nice little porch. I don't like yellow houses. But with another coat of paint. Oh, Papa, that's it. Yes, sir, that's it. If we only could. Well, why can't we? Our luck's bound to change, and the first thing we'll do is buy this little house when... someday... Look, come here. As long as we're gonna buy that house someday, uh, why don't we maybe borrow it for now, like uh, we make out it's ours? Then your address would be... Uh, uh, 98 Hibbert Avenue, starting right now. Then you see, they kind of transfer you from your old school. How do you mean, Papa? Yes, sir, that's it. We can say you come here to live with your aunt. Your rich old aunt. She, she's lonesome, and she's gonna leave you all the money. Oh, Papa, could we read? Really? Sure, we could. It's nobody's business. Mm, sometimes I forget to water the geraniums, and <gasps> you ought to hear Annie scold me. Oh, but you gotta put up with her crotchets. After all, you're her heir. That little room up there, that could be mine, couldn't it? Uh, uh, look, Prima Donna, after all, you know, uh, this ain't exactly according to the rules. You mean it's wrong? No, sir, not by a jugful it ain't wrong. Look, the house is here, we're here, and the school's here. Now, we wasn't all thrown together for no reason, but we gotta keep it kind of a secret. You know, you can't tell nobody, and you gotta be extra good to make up for it. Oh, I will. Look, there goes Andy now, I think. Looks like you got an uncle, too. <laughs> now, I'm gonna show you the way to your new school through a beautiful little park, and I know right where it is. And you can see the seasons change when you go. Bend down, Papa. My cup runneth over. Dishonest, that's what it is. You're setting the child an awful bad example. Papa says if it doesn't hurt anybody, then it's not dishonest in your heart. You two and your fancy word. How do you spell transfer, Francie? T-R-A-N-S-F-E-R. I'd rather be shot than do this arithmetic. It'll come to you, Sonny. And another thing, we kept Francie out a year so she and Neely could be in the same class and she could look after them. And here, just the year when they're getting ready to graduate, you go and... I tell you, it's against the law, and you're making her live a lie, and I won't have you doing it. I'm gonna do this for her, Katie. Maybe it's my fault or not that there ain't much I can give her. But this is one thing she's gonna have. Well, it'll make an awful long walk for your mornings. I don't mind getting up early. And it'll be much harder on your shoes, and you won't have dresses like the other children. I promise to wash down my dress every single night. How do you spell appreciate, Francie? A P P. Wait a minute. R E C I A T E. Well, if the principal swallows that story, and I don't think he will, I'll see what I can do about making over that check dress of mine for you. Why not? My school's overcrowded as it is. This is Frances Nolan, class. I'm sure you'll all make her welcome to our school. Now, that will be your desk, Frances. Sonny, I 
guess we got everything. Neely, our new fire escape leaks clear up under the roof. Whoever lives on the top floor has got kids on the roof. Sonny ain't doing so well, eh, Mrs. Nolan? Just moving near the sun. As soon as we heard Mrs. Waters was vacating, we made up our minds. I've been waiting to see you, Mrs. Nolan. Uh, Sophie, I got to ask you a favor. I, I better show you. Hey, look at that snake! It's in here. The late Mr. Waters gave it to me for a wedding present. It won't go down the stairs, and they want $15 to move it, lowering it out the window. Uh, do you mind my leaving it, Mrs. Nolan? It don't take up much room. And someday when I get the $15, I'll send that for it. Why, sure, I don't mind, Miss Waters. Can you play it? <laughs> no, then neither one of us could. And if it ain't too much trouble, you could dust it off once in a while and keep the kitchen door open a little so it won't get cold or damp. I sure will. Oh, thank you. And I hope it won't thank be you. long before you can send that oh, for yeah. it. Have you got the curtains? Yes, they're coming. Is it a... Um... Is that a... Yeah, we kept the baby in it about 40 years ago. Well, I was just wondering if, if, if you don't need it, make a nice handy little wash basket and I, I'd, I'd be glad to give you a quarter for it. Oh, sure. Glad your kids isn't even too old. Excuse me for asking, Mrs. Nolan, but it's... Won't really make a very handy wash basket. Please don't say nothing. I ain't told nobody yet. It ain't always easy when you're poor. But it'll be a blessing to you. Yeah, sure. Sure it will. But there must be. I tell you, there ain't. Well, goodbye, Mrs. Nolan. Goodbye. 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 And thank you very much. Don't forget we're supposed to give him a beer. Or the price of one. Well, I'm done. I can't thank you enough, Charlie. Always glad to do my customers a favor, of course. Well, we are real grateful. It ain't as though I was in the regular moving business. We'll be taking ice from you, same as usual, once a week. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, Charlie. And thanks. He worked awful hard, Mama. We moved up to this flat to save money, and we're not going to start by throwing dimes away. No, sir, there ain't a bathtub anywhere. I looked all over. There's the tub, young man. Every Wednesday and Saturday, same as always. It's Mr. Barker. Well, seems like the Nolans have not come up in the world. Yes, we're so very, very fond of the sunshine. Run and catch him before he goes to the old place. Mr. Nolan had to be working when we found we could make the move. Uh-huh. Smaller than your old flat, ain't it? I'm sorry I can't ask you to sit, Mr. Barker. I ain't even got the coffee on yet, but I got my insurance money handy. I suppose you're too busy to listen to a bit of news about your sister. She, uh, she's gonna have a baby. Please tell my sister she shouldn't make herself such a stranger here. I shall be very happy to render your message. Your receipt, Mrs. Nolan. Be sure to now, Mr. Barker. Good day to you, Mr. Nolan. Well, I'm not one to spoil a family party. I'll be on my way. Surprise, Papa. Welcome to your new home. Yeah. It is kind of a surprise, all right. Did you move up here because it was cheaper or because I... We have to save where we can. Somebody's got to. I don't mind the extra stairs. We can still see the tree. Pop, the top floor tenants, the roof is theirs. And I ain't gonna let anybody up there except Penny Gaddis because... Hey, does Pop know? Flossie Gaddis died last night. 
Oh, the poor baby. It was nice that her mama got her all them pretty dresses. Only now the poor thing will have to lie in Potter's Field. But she did have the dresses. You better show your papa the piano. Yeah. You better show me the piano, Pamela. The lady that was here left us. It's got a nice tone. It's all right. Hey, now that we got it, maybe you can take some lessons. Uh, mm, Max Welton's braids are bonny. We're early for the dew and was there that Annie Laurie gave me a promise true gave me a promise true which never forget will be And for Bonnie Annie Lori, I would lay me do and dee. I ain't never heard you sing that before. It's pretty. It... Max Welton braves are bonny where early falls the dew. And twas there that Annie Laurie gave me a promise true. Gave me a promise true, which ne'er will be and for Barney Annie glory I would lay me doom and of a vacation we've all looked forward to. And I'm sure we'll all enjoy our holidays more knowing we've helped some unfortunate family who would have had no Christmas dinner without this basket. And so a merry, oh, one last thing. This extra pie Miss Schilling brought in. It's, it's little and a bit crushed, but anybody want it? My, what well-fed boys and girls. <laughs> all right, Klaus. Miss McDonald. Yes, Klaus. I just remembered. I know a very unfortunate family. They live in a, in a hovel. They have two children, little golden-haired twins, and they're all starving. The pie will probably save their lives. Well, then, you shall take the pie by all means. You can come and get it when class is dismissed, which is now. And Merry Christmas to you all. That was a very fine Christmas spirit, Francis. But it seems such a tiny pie to save so many lives. Oh, it would seem small to them, Miss McDonald. Even a little pie could look awful big if you hadn't had very much to eat for days and days. I'll have to tell them to eat it slowly, because if they eat it too fast on an empty stomach, they'll... they'll... It isn't true. It's all a lie. I wanted it for myself. I'll stay after school. I'll do anything, but don't send a note home. I'm not going to punish your child for being hungry or having an imagination. You know, that's something very few people have. It's very precious. But it can also be dangerous unless we learn how to use it. Our, our everyday lives are real and true, aren't they? But all the stories in the world, all the music, 
came out of someone's imagination. So, if we tell the truth and write the lies, then they aren't lies anymore. They become stories, like some of the very nice compositions you've written, Francis. Like the one about my father taking me to see the cotton fields down south. We didn't really go. Mm, I rather imagined you didn't. But don't you think it would be still better if you'd write about the things you really know about and then add to them with your imagination? Even, even stories shouldn't be just, well, pipe dreams. Pipe dreamers can be very lovable people, but they don't help anybody, not even themselves. Now, think about it a little and have a Merry Christmas. And enjoy your pie. Yes, Miss McDonald. Thank you, Miss McDonald. For God's sakes, where you been? You were supposed to meet me at... We're just like that. Neely, I'm going to be a writer. All right, but let's eat the pie. Come on, we gotta see about our Christmas tree. Oh, golly, it's still there, isn't it? Yeah, it's still here. He ain't got much time left to sell it. Go on, beat it. You know I ain't gonna throw them till midnight. What are you trying to do, block the sidewalk? Keep customers out? Hey, you don't Come own the either. sidewalk. How about this one, madam? No, that one's too big. I want a small one. I got just what you want. Come over here, lady. Well, now, that's more like it. That's the size. It's awful big to get thrown at you. Why does he have to throw them at us anyway? Why can't he just give them to us if he don't sell them? If he just gave them away, everybody'd wait. They'd never sell any of them. Smells good. Yes, you do. Yes, <laughs> hey, I I stumbled. Come on, beat it. Who's that? Come on, give me a chance. I'm next. All right. Here she goes. Got it, didn't I? All right, take it. Go home. Now, who wants to try this one? Who's man enough for this big one right here? I can take anything you've got, Mr. Letterf. I'm next. That's my turn. <laughs> Why aren't you too small? Go home. Me and my brother, we ain't too small together. Spunky, huh? All right. But if one of you drop, you're not going to get the tree. Yeah, oh, you know. <laughs> okay, you are done it coming. Go ahead. Oh, quit worrying about them, Katie. They'll be home pretty quick. They ain't old enough to be out this late. Johnny should have made them tell what they was up to. No telling what's likely to happen if Francie gets a notion They'll be all there. right. I guess we better get on home. I'll see them tomorrow. No, don't go. Hey, Pop! Hey, Mom! Hey, Mom! Holy smoke! Will you look what they've went and done? They're trying to make a Christmas. Help them, kid. I was only wondering if you couldn't use a little help, huh? Come on, come on, come on. Well, how in Jerusalem did you ever get this? Look at my face, Pop. Look at my Nobody face. Nobody around here ever saw a tree like look that. Look at my face. If you don't believe oh, me. Oh, and I see you got the more on your side, too. Merry Christmas, Mr. Nolan. And it looks like you're going to have one. Well, the same to you, Mr. McShane, and thanks. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, Mr. Nolan. Nolan. Merry Christmas, Miss Maggie. Isn't this a wonderful Christmas, Papa? Oh, it is now, prima donna. Imagine us having a tree like that. And the nicest kids in the world, I guess. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas, 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 Merry Christmas
Thieves, the name. That's better, Bill. Oh, oh they she underwear. <laughs> but look at all the fun you can have scratching. <laughs> Thank you, Mama. You know you hate them. <laughs> but just fine, Mama. <laughs> <laughs> I got something for you, too, Mama. Johnny, it was real nice of your friend, Mr. McGarrity, to send over those candy canes to the kids. Yeah. Here, I made this candle for today. You better light it now. It's time. Uh -huh. Merry Christmas, Mama, for me and Neely. Oh. Oh, oh it's pretty. What is it? Rose water and glycerine. You rub it on your hands. This is for you, Papa. For me and Neely. My! I'll be quite the thing, won't I? I think it's silly. But Fancy said Papa was always talking about what nice hands you got. It cost a dime, but we had a salsa bottle top in the junk. Uh, uh... Uh... It's a watch, Bob. It's made out of shoelaces. I wove it on a spool with nails. Well, if that ain't about the nicest thing I ever did see. Maybe it's kind of silly. You're not having a watch. And well, now, madam, we're all out of mushrooms under glass, but uh, I can tell you the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's the nicest present I ever did get, Prima Donna. And uh, thank you, too, son. You're welcome. I guess the shoelaces was mine. <laughs> it was silly. There ain't nothing silly on Christmas. I, uh, I got a little present here. Oh. Like I was saying, I got... Merry Christmas, Miss Brown. Come on, they're in here. It's Mr. McShane. I hope I'm not intruding. Oh, Merry Christmas, Mr. Merry McShane. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I was just, uh... Hello, handsome. Oh, <laughs> Mrs. Edwards. I, I was just passing, and I happened to see the lights still burning. And I got to thinking I'd like to have a hand in decorating that fine Christmas tree. <laughs> I see somebody's already provided. Well, we can always use more of them, Mr. McShane. Thank you kindly. <laughs> Won't you come in and have a cup of coffee with us? Oh, uh, thanks, no. I, uh, this evening's for families. And I, I got to be getting home now, so I, I'll say goodbye and, and uh, Merry Christmas to everybody. Thank you, Merry, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. That was mighty nice of him. Mr. McShane's a fine man. He's, I think, sometimes a lonely man. Well, like I was saying, I, I got something here. I mean, I, I got a present for, for somebody that ain't exactly here. Grandma helped me pick it out. It's for you-know-who. Oh, Bill, it's beautiful. Look, everybody. Oh, oh Bill, darling, I've never been so happy. I want to get some coffee. Katie? Yeah. I'm glad for you. I don't know. I'm scared, I guess. You got no call to be. Look how swell them two are. Yeah, they are. You told Johnny yet? Or maybe you order it might help them. Yeah. We better take the coffee in. You're a fine girl, Katie. I never said any different. That's for nothing, Johnny. Except maybe being a nice guy. Coffee, everybody. Uh. Well, I guess that's about all. Johnny, I gotta tell you something. Maybe it ain't the right time, and maybe it is. The reason I moved us up here... We're gonna have a baby, Johnny. That's why I've been scrimping so much and trying so hard to save. Oh, that's... Well, I, 
Well, I'm awful glad, Katie. If you are... There's a lot we got to think about, Johnny. Oh, I know, but we'll make out. Maybe things will be different. Uh, and we'll have one to grow up with all over again. I got things all figured out. I ought to be able to work until, well, anyway, April. And then Francie will have to leave school and take out her working paper. She's young, but with what she can make, we ought to be able to make out. Oh, and but I... we can't do that, Katie. I don't like it any better than you do, Johnny, but I thought and I thought, and there ain't no other way. But... And Johnny, you gotta help with something. She listens to you. You gotta quit getting her so all excited about her school and... But why can't it be Neely? He's the boy and he don't care like she does. Well, maybe that's why. Maybe it'll do her good to get out in the world and... Learn something, learn how to take care of herself, learn something practical while she's young. She's got to learn someday. Well, uh, there must be another way. Uh, uh, oh, I don't know. I'll, I'll try and swing anything. I'll do anything. We can't count on that, Johnny. Don't look at me like that, Johnny. It ain't my fault. Well, that ain't your fault either, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, one member of the Nolan family will get to graduate and she come close. That's something. You better put out the light and let's get some rest. I thought you'd be asleep, prima donna. Uh-uh. I've been thinking. I, I might be going to be a writer. I've just about decided. Huh. I, I knew you when you was going to be a lady fireman. Don't joke, Papa. I'm serious. All right, baby. All I meant was... Uh, maybe it's better not to get your heart set on, on, on just one thing. In case something happens, or... She said... Miss McDonough, I mean. She said maybe I could be. She said I have... imagination. Do you think I have, Papa? Oh, sure you have, baby. Them compositions of yours are sure fine, but... She said I'd have to work hard. She said imagination wasn't any good if... if you were just a pipe dreamer about it. You didn't help anybody that way. Not even yourself, she said. Yeah, I see. A pipe dreamer. I'm not putting it good like she did. I wish you could have heard her. She was wonderful. Forever and ever, I'll be glad you helped me go to that school, Papa. You kind of like that school, don't you, baby? Yes. Oh, yes. And she said lots more. I've been trying to remember. She said, even if you have imagination, it's better to write about the things you know about, so they'll be true. And, and the way things are. Only... Only what, baby? Papa, the people in the hall when we brought up the tree, the look on their faces, all friendly and nice. Why can't people be like that all the time? Not just on Christmas. Well, I, I guess it's because... Well, I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's because Christmas is like people really are and the other part ain't true. And with that imagination of yours, if you think about it hard enough, you know, like it ought to be. But when uh, you get to thinking, Pop, the people in stories, they don't just live happily ever after, do they? No, baby, but... But the trouble is, it, it doesn't feel good when you think about things like that. I, I mean... Like they really are. You better stick out your tongue, Bernadonna. Oh, it's just like I thought. You got a bad case, a very bad case. Case of what, Papa? A very bad case of growing up. <laughs> That's all it is. Oh, it ain't fun sometimes, but... Don't you be afraid. I don't want you should ever be afraid. You're so nice. 
nice, Papa. I guess it's better if you don't just stay young all your life. It'll be much nicer growing up. see things like they really are. Coming to bed, Johnny? No, I'm going to take a little walk. Don't start drinking. Not tonight, Johnny. I won't, Kitty. I won't. Go out on a job, do you know? If he did, he didn't get through us. Thank you. Oh, how are you, Mrs. Nolan? And a happy New Year to you. Same to you, Mr. McGarity. I just came to. Well, I happened to be passing by, and I thought I'd run in and thank you for the candy canes you sent us. It was nice of you. Oh, that's all right. It wasn't much. Well, it was nice of you. Good night, Mr. McGarry. Good night, Mrs. Norm. Mrs. Norm. Johnny ain't here. He ain't been here since before Christmas. I'm afraid it's bad news I'm bringing you, Mrs. Nolan. Our station just got a report that Mr. Nolan was found over in Manhattan, very sick. He's been taken to a hospital. See that Neely gets to school on time in the morning. There's an apple for you. The, the report said that he, he, he just collapsed right in the doorway of an employment agency. And he'd just been going out on a job, a uh, sand hog in a the tunnel, they said. And he hadn't been drinking, ma'am. Uh, he'd been waiting there a long time for the job. He was just sick. We did everything we could. Yeah, sure, I know. What are you writing down that he died from, Doctor? Acute alcoholism and pneumonia. One led to the other. I don't want you to write down that he died like that. Put just the pneumonia. I can't do that. Pneumonia was a direct cause of death, but the alcoholism was... Look, he's dead. I got two nice kids that are going to grow up to amount to something. Why do you have to make it hard by saying their father died from the drink? When that's only a little piece of the truth. He wasn't drinking. They said so. He was out looking for work. Why'd you put that down? Cause of death. Pneumonia. rest and happiness through the infinite merits of Jesus Christ. O oh God, great and omnipotent judge of the living and the dead, before whom we are all to appear after this short life to <laughs> render an account of our work. 
Let our hearts, we pray, they be deeply moved at the sight of this death. And while we consign the body of the deceased of the earth, let us be mindful of our own frailties and mortality. <laughs> that walking always in thy fear and in the ways of thy commandments, we may after our departure from this world experience a merciful judgment and rejoice in everlasting happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Oh, them people and the flowers. Some of them from people I never heard of, even. Who'd have thought that many folks? I mean, they was carrying on like they was his, his family or, or... I don't know. Yeah. He took the time to make a lot of people love him, all right. It's hard to figure out so many of them showing up. And they was feeling something. I mean, there was no reason for him to put on. He was nobody big. He Katie, was just a... Don't talk about it no more, kid. Francie. Best leave would be, Katie. She maybe wants to be by herself. She's taking on kind of funny. She ain't even cried. Shaving cup. That one. No one. Oh, you're the little girl. Yes, I'll clean it up for you. He was a fine man. Tell the mama that I, his barber, said this. Nancy, dear, where are you going? No place. Francie. Yes, Mama? It was nice of the neighbors to send over all that food. Don't you want something? No, Mama. I wanted to talk to you, Francie. I want things to go on, reading and all. I want to do... Well, I got to be Mama and Papa both to you now, Francie. Yes, Mama. Is that all, Mama? Well... You got to go right now, Francie. I... I'll be back. Honest, I will. Mom, I guess I'm a little hungry. Look, you can't be dead. You can't. They don't understand. Maybe you could, you could let me have a baby someday. And it could be a boy. So it could be just like him. And it'd have to be me. Nobody else loved him like I do. Maybe you could do that for me. And if you could, he wouldn't even die.
I hope you don't think I'm forward coming in like this, Mrs. Nolan. Uh, how are you, Francie? I'm well, thank you. Have a chair. Francie, see if Mr. McGarity won't have some coffee. Not for me, thank you. I figured I ought to come. I suppose you know how Johnny and me had done business. He'd give me some money to keep sometimes and... and dog against it. And when he... Well, I, um, I got to look it around. And, and what do you think? I had, I had nearly five bucks in his box. And so I, I, I figured it belonged to you. If you told the truth, it'd be more unlikely that he owed you. But, thanks very much. Well, I just start. We'll make out. Well, there's, there's something else then. Thought maybe you wouldn't mind if, if, uh, if maybe Francie and Neely come down and walk for me, afternoons like, after school and Saturdays. And of course, uh, maybe it ain't the kind of a place you'd favor them working in, but uh, I'd, I'd keep an eye on them. And I'd pay them uh, $2 a week apiece. And uh, I, I'd take it as a great favor, ma'am. You're a very bad liar, Mr. McGarity, but you're a, a good man, and I'm ashamed I didn't know it before. No, I did like that, ma'am. Johnny was... Well, I don't know. Johnny... Johnny always talked about his family like... Uh, one like folks ought and don't. And, um... Uh, whenever he talked about anything, he... He, um... He always made you... You felt better, or you wanted to laugh. Like that seashell I had there. He was always... He was always listening to it and... and, and telling you what it was singing. He was always giving things like that to people. He, he... He was a fine man, Mrs. Norland. I'd be glad to let the children work for you, Mr. McGarity. And the four dollars a week will keep us until the baby comes and Francie won't have to quit school and she can keep on and they can both... Well, it's a, it's a deal then, and you tell them to come through the family entrance tomorrow after school, and uh, is that all right with you, Francie? Yes. Well, uh, well, it's it's settled then, and uh, and good day to you, Mrs. Nolan. And and thank you again, Mr. McGarity. Francie. Yes, Mama. I'm I'm glad you can keep on with your school. I, I, I was hoping something like this would happen, but I, I didn't want to say anything until the time come. But your pop and I talked it all over, and, and there were reasons. And there just wasn't any other way. It doesn't matter. Papa saved me from it. Sure taking chances, I wouldn't leave and you handle them eats. Where's Francie? <coughs> Thanks. Hiya, Mac. Hello, kid. How are you, ma'am? Look, you gotta do something for me. This was in the paper and I cut it out. You gotta read it to me and... What's the matter, hon? Nothing. I'm all right, Aunt Sissy. No, you ain't. You ain't been since... Look, don't you think you better spill it to your Aunt Sissy? What is it you want me to read to your Aunt Sissy? Well, we'll get that out of the way first. Look, here it is. Likely you don't remember him, but it's my last husband, Bill. The one I thought was dead, but he ain't. He's got his picture in there, and I want to know what it says. Maybe it says where he lives, so I can write to him about getting a divorce or something. I got the best husband in all the world now, and I don't want this here one bobbing up and making no trouble. He's a fireman someplace. I can tell that from his clothes. He was just starting out in the fireman business. He says business, he's a hero. He saves some people in a fire. Does it say where? The Ninth Precinct, Manhattan. Manhattan, huh? Couldn't make the grade in Brooklyn, I guess. I want you to write to him, Francie. Write this. Dear Bill. This says his name is Roland Pulaski. That's right, I remember. Make it dear Mr. Pulaski. Beans is now I'm married to somebody else. I want you to see about getting a real legal divorce. Because I thought you was dead, but you ain't. And because you got the money now on account of the reward. Yours very truly sissy, something like that. But Aunt Sissy, he must have already done that. Because it says here he's married again. 
it does. On the human interest side of the story, Mrs. Pulaski had returned home only the day before from the hospital after presenting Mr. Pulaski with a brand new son, the fourth child of the marriage. So if he got a divorce that long ago, you don't have to. Then my being married to Bill, this one I mean is all legal? Well, now if that ain't a load off my chest. You know something? I think I'll give Bill Pulaski a wedding present. But, Aunt Sister, you can't. He's been married for years. Four kids, huh? Must be a pretty sickly woman, this Mrs. Pulaski, going to the hospital just to have a baby. Oh, no. Lots of people go there now to have babies. It's better. Sure enough. You know something? I'm going to cash in my funeral policy and have my baby at a hospital. And when my baby is born and lives, I want you to write that R. Pulaski and announce it. Boy, do I feel better. And now, Chicken Pity, we'll talk about you. Can't your Aunt Sissy help you any? I'm all right. No, you aren't, honey. Not all shut up like that. I know how you feel, but you can't keep hanging on to it. I'm all right. I don't want to talk about it. All right, baby, all right. But I tell you what, you can do something for me. Look, your mama feels awful bad, too. She needs you. Why don't you talk to her about it? She doesn't need Yes, she doesn't. No, she doesn't. She's got Neely. Why wasn't it Neely she was going to make quit school? He never cared about it. She doesn't love me like Papa did, and she didn't love him either. Not really. She hurt him. I saw it, and he never hurt anybody. I'm going to finish this grade because he gave it to me, and then I'll work for her. But she can't be Papa to me. She can't ever. Don't feel like that, baby. Don't. Leave me alone. I'm all right. Please go away and leave me alone. I want to talk to you, Francie. Yes, Mama? It isn't going to be long now. For me, I mean. My baby. We can't come to a hospital. There isn't even going to be enough money for a woman to come and help. I'm going to need you, Francie. Don't ever be far away. Neely's... Well, a boy ain't much good at a time like this. I'm counting on you, Francie. You won't forget that, will you? All right, Mama. I'll remember. Uh, which one of you is Mr. Stephen Edwards? Uh, that's me. Well, there are three in your family now. You're the father of a pretty fine boy. Alive? Uh, very much so. He was a little reluctant about it at first. I had to rouse him with a little oxygen. Now he's mad at me. You ought to hear him. I've got to see him. Uh, well, uh, neither one of them are quite up to a visit just now. In a little while. The learning. The learning that saved that baby. That's fine, Bill. Where are you going, Uncle Bill? I'm going out and get some strawberry ice cream and a rattle for my son. And what's more, my name ain't Bill. It's Steve. Do you hear that? I'm a papa and my name's Steve. And it's Uncle Steve, too. Steve. Steve. So we have a man in the family. As quick as we see if she's all right, you go on up to McGarry's and see if you can do my work, too. I'm going to finish the scrubbing for her. The shop can do any more. She wasn't feeling good this morning. Mama! after Grandma and Sissy. He can walk home after. Get me a nightgown in that bottom drawer. Hurry, don't stand there staring. Is she gonna die? Of course not. It's the baby. You heard what Mom said. And hurry. And don't forget stopping at McGarrity's on the way back. We can't lose the work. She only wants me now. Mama? What is it? Oh, I'll be there in a 
minute. Taking real good care of me, Francie. Yeah, my mama. Mm. Tastes good. Can I get you a glass of water, Mama? When I want something, I'll ask for it. Yes, Mama. Don't just stand there and throw questions at me. I'm too tired. You better have some coffee, too. Mama, even if Neely is a boy, wouldn't you rather have him here? He's always such a comfort to no, you. No, it's you that's a comfort now. What time is it? I don't know, Mama. Get the clock. Mama. Are you sure it isn't slow? No, Mama. Maybe it's fast then. I'll look at the jeweler's clock out the parlor window. The candle's pretty. Like Christmas. That was the night I told him. It's nice having a visit from my daughter. I didn't want for you to have to grow up so soon. I didn't want for you to have to quit school. I tried to tell him that. He didn't mind about the baby, but he never forgive me for wanting you to quit school. I told him, and he just went out. You never forgive me either. Please don't, Mama. He would have bought you dolls instead of milk. And I don't know, maybe you would have been happier. I don't know. I never would have thought of giving you that school like he did. And all them fine compositions of yours. I never read one of them. I should have had time. Johnny did. But I couldn't do no different. I don't know how I could do any different. What time is it? One minute after four, Mama. Ran cloth out of cold water and wiped my face. Don't let her die. Suppose the baby comes before Grandma and Aunt Sissy get here. You can see I couldn't do no different, can't you? Neely, he don't like school. If he'd quit, he'd never go back again. But you, no matter what happens, you'd find a way to go back. You'd fight to go back. You can see that, can't you? I... Yes, Mama. Read me something, Francie. Yes, Mama. Read me one of your compositions. I ain't never read any of your compositions. It's on my conscience. I tore all those up. No, you didn't. Not all of them. Can I read you Shakespeare? It's much better. Read was on a night like this. I'd like to have something pretty on my mind. Sit by the candle. Shines bright in such a night as this, when the sweet wind did gently kiss the trees. Hey, did you ever find out who Troilus was and Cressida? 
Yes, Mama. Twilight was some other day when I got time. Read me one of your compositions now. You won't like them, Mama. You thought about them and you worked on them and you got good marks on them. Get them, I said. people loved. Please don't make me read it, Mama. Read it. Perhaps many people might have said of him that he was a failure. It is true that he had no gift for making money, but he had a gift for laughter and for making people love him. He had the gift of making you feel proud to walk down the street with him. He had nothing to give but himself, but of this he gave generously, like a king. Like a king. That's like it was, walking down the street with him, you always felt like that. Did you, Mama? You're real smart to write it down like that, Francie. That's like it was. Francie. I miss him so much. The baby's a boy. We'll call him Johnny. Where's Sissy? Neely's been gone a long time. <laughs> Wipe my face. No, don't let go my hand. If it's a girl, we'll call her Annie Laurie. Remember that tune he played? You ought to have piano lessons. I'll see if I can manage. You won't forget to dust the piano, will you, Francie? Who cry for me like that if I died? I never did a wrong thing in my life, but it ain't enough. Oh, sissy, I didn't mean to be hard, like you said. If Johnny was here, he could go to your graduation and I'd go to Neely's, but I, I can't tear myself into two pieces. How am I gonna do both? Oh, where are you, Francie? I'm here, Mama. Oh. You're such a comfort to me. I'm so tired. Leave me sleep now. You better start some water boiling chicken, Daddy. We'll call you if there's anything we need. Quit worrying. The baby is here. And the mama is doing good. She's asleep. A small baby sister it is. Annie Laurie. Papa would have liked that. She won't miss a thing. Oh. Isn't your classroom around here somewhere? Yes, but How about giving me a peek? Wouldn't hurt me none seeing a little more places like that. Hey, Francie, you forgot your flowers. They aren't mine. I'm not carrying flowers today. Some of the girls, their family sends them flowers. They're on your desk, Lamb. Better go see. 
Oh, well, I have to get my things anyway. Gave me the money to buy him way before Christmas. To make sure he had it, he said. Then he wrote out the card. Come on, kid. Let it go, baby. They're into soul down here. Let it go. Francis Nolan. Well, sir, I don't think Grandma said one word the whole time. And from the looks of her, when I put her on a streetcar, she'll probably ride clear out to Coney Island and never know the difference. <laughs> Heaven knows what she'd have been like if she'd got to both graduations. <laughs> Looks to me like it was a pretty fine day. How's your soda, Fancy? Pineapple's not as good as chocolate. And what do you order it for? Because I'm up to the peas. I'll try raspberry next. There's something to that idea. Try everything once. Sissy. And a dime for you, my boy. This is a special occasion. Thank you. You don't know how special it is. Two diplomas in the Nolan family all in one day. Mama, I've got a nickel if you want to leave it. People do. It's going to be all right, Francie. And you know something? These ain't gonna be the last diplomas either. I don't know how we're gonna work it, but we're gonna find some way for you and... Hi, Nene. How you doing? Okay. I got out of jail. Say, wasn't it you I saw working behind that bat the other day? Why, yeah, but... Hey, you were pretty good. You know what? I'm coming out and give you some pointers sometime. Honest? Sure I will. That is, if your ma don't mind. No, she won't mind. You mean it? Sure. Well, I'll see you on the lot. Maybe you better ask your ma, you know, I don't want to do anything she wouldn't want me to. No, she won't care. Maybe you better ask her yourself, just to make sure. I'm Neely's aunt. This is his ma. But that's his sister. What's your name, big boy? Herschel Knudsen. <clears throat> Mr. Knudsen, I'd like you to meet my niece, Miss Francie Nolan. Pleased to meet you. Hello. Nice night if it don't rain. Sit down, Herschel. Uh, you doing anything tomorrow afternoon, Miss Nolan? It's Saturday. I don't know. Why? Well, there's a swell picture. Bill Hyde. Maybe you'd like to go. Who is? Me. Oh. Well, I might be busy. I'll let you know. Well, I'll come around and see. Hey, I thought we was gonna play ball tomorrow. Yeah, well, we can do that any time. Sure, there's lots of time. Ah, come on, Bruce. Well, I'll be seeing you, Miss Nolan. Him, mushy. I'm proud of you, Chicka Bitty. You handled him fine. It was the hair that done it. Well, I hate to bust this party up, but them babies got to be fed. Steve will be needing a little something, too. Three hours with the both of them. Baby out of fifty. Keep the change. Oh, thank you. Why, Katie Nolan. I don't care. There's times when feeling good and things like that is important. I don't care. You want to carry my flowers, Mama? I'm begging your pardon, Mrs. Nolan. I just happened to drop in, and your brother-in-law here seemed to be needing a little help. 
And the baby didn't seem to mind, so I, I hope I'm not intruding. Not at all, Mr. McShane. You sit right down. We're going home. Come along, Steve. I'll take her, Mr. McShane. Oh, I'd like it if you'd leave her. Her and me has got to be good friends. Well, I wish you didn't have to hurry. You gotta get this family of mine home. Steve's gotta deliver milk to a lot of those babies that like that bottle kind. Oh, you don't want to frown like that, Katie. The fellas don't go for that at all. Goodbye, kids. So long, Mac. Oh, uh, so long, Mrs. Edwards. Thank you, Aunt Sissy. Bye, Mac. Mr. Edwards, goodbye. Well. Well, I will take the baby from you, Mr. McShane. Mrs. Nolan? Likely you've been wondering why I came here tonight. I'll let your wondering be over because I came here on a personal matter. Mama, shall I go? No, and... no, uh, don't be leaving, children. My conversation will be concerning you as well as your mother. Mrs. Nolan, I feel that there's no disrespect in my speaking my mind at this time. And I feel a decent time has elapsed since the passing of Mrs. McShane. God rest her soul. Oh, I didn't know, Mr. McShane. I'm sorry. Well, I, I said nothing, Mrs. Nolan, because it was near the time of your own bereavement. And I didn't wish to... Well, I, I, I know that uh, it's barely six months now since your own husband, too left this world, rest his soul. But when you feel a decent interval has elapsed, I'm asking to keep company with you, Catherine Nolan, with the object of a wedding when a decent time has elapsed. And for my part, I'll be glad to keep company with you, Mr. McShane. Not for the help you can give us, because we know we can manage some way. But because you're a good man, Mr. McShane. Um, and there's, uh, there's one more thing. Their father was a fine man. And I'd have no wish to be trying to take his place. It would be more my intention to be like a real good friend. As the eldest, would you be approving? Yes, Mr. McShane. Now, I, I was thinking it, it wouldn't be right for me to ask the two eldest to take my name. But the, the little one, the one who has never looked on her father, could you be thinking of letting me legally adopt her? If that time comes, the child shall have your name. And now I'm, I'm wondering if I could smoke my pipe. You could have smoked any time, Mr. McShane. I, uh, I didn't want to take any privileges before I was entitled to them. We put her to bed, Neely. Why? To fix the blankets. Oh. I'll be heating up the coffee now. Will you join me in a cup, Mr. McShane? Oh, thank you, Catherine. I will. Annie Laurie McShane. Yeah. She'll never have the hard times we had, will she? She'll never have the fun, either. We did have fun when we were young, didn't we? Yeah. Remember the olden days when we collected junk? Poor Laurie. 
Neely, look at the tree. It's growing again, just like Papa said. I feel kind of sad, like, like we're saying goodbye to something. Yeah. Neely? Mm-hmm. Am I good looking? Oh, what's eating you? No, honest, Neely. I want to know. You'll pass. You're sweet, Neely. Oh, cut the mush. <laughs> <laughs> 